Hi there and welcome back to Islam's Lab. Today I would like to announce that I'm finally finished my own power supply prototyping. So let's see how I made it from scratch. Before this one, I just made power supply by converting an ATX power supply into a benchtop power supply. It was really good for 12 volts applications, but it's limited especially in protection functions, voltage and current control. I remember one day I was charging unstable battery and forgot to switch off the power supply before I sleep. Then, it ended up by battery enclosure melting and the battery was boiling from inside. I was really lucky to smell it from my room. So, I wanted to buy a real lab power supply. Then I found this is really pricey. And that's why I decided to design my own. So, in this video, I want to share the printed circuit board design. I will talk about how it works, and it's up to you guys to modify this design or work with it as it is. First, let's talk about the main board. I just wanted to make this at home. But thanks for that. I found printed circuit board manufacturer can make really cheap printed circuit boards. I was afraid from having bad quality printed circuit boards, but they really surprised me because when I received my printed circuit board, I found everything is excellent and I never expected to have a good quality PCB and at this price. So now let's move to the soldering process. I will not explain how to solder in this video. So in next video I want to talk a little about soldering skills. So don't forget to subscribe. Now my board is ready to handle some power. First, let me tell you some facts about what I included in this board. The main part of control here is Ad Mega 320E chip that loaded with Arduino. It's easy for most of people to modify or calibrate their own power supply firmware. Before doing anything, we need to burn the Arduino bootloader to the chip. Here on board left corner, you can find ISP socket, can be used for burning board loader or even programming your board. Check out the description to know how to burn board loader via ISP socket to any Arduino compatible chip. So, after burning the bootloader, now you can upload any Arduino port to your port using micro USB cable. By looking at the right side of the board, you can see this port is equipped with USB to serial converter using CH340G chip. If you can't find this chip in your country, there are UART pins. So, you can use any USB to serial converter to upload your code externally. The LCD here is using HC74595 shift register that saving Arduino pins by using only 3 wires to control the LCD. Also, if you want to use I2C screen, 
Here you can find I2C pin headers that can be used to attach any I2C devices to your power supply. The temperature of the power supply here is measured by small NTC resistor. And also the fan here is worked according to the current temperature. So when the temperature goes high, the fan can reach the maximum speed. For overcurrent, under voltage, battery charging protection, and over temperature here, you can see a relay. This relay will cut off the AC from the power transformers for the power supply safety and the load safety as well. So now after you understanding hardware components, I think you want to see this power supply in action. I have chosen this enclosure. I know it's not the best choice to use wooden enclosure, but it will work anyway. Here I attached the NTC thermistor to the DC-DC converter, because you know, active components goes hot quickly. Voltage of input and output are measured by simple voltage divider of 10K and 100K resistor. And the current is measured by calculating the difference between this power resistor in and out from low side of the circuit and gaining it using LM358 of amp. And for 5 volts line, we use separate 9 volts transformer feeding the power via 5 volts regulator. So, for sure, it will be always on unless you switch it off the whole power supply via AC switch. As you know, if you are returning subscriber, I am that guy who don't know how to write good code. So, I really wanted to make menus for this power supply. But instead of this, just use left or right to navigate up and down to increase or decrease the values. So in first panel here, you can use your power supply without limits. Just safety limits are active. By pressing right button here, in the second line of the screen, you will see that limiting values shows up under the actual value of voltage. You can adjust minimum drop voltage allowed and under the actual current you can adjust the maximum current as well so when the load reaches the maximum current the power supply will switch off the main transformers telling you to remove the load then press up button to switch on the power transformers again by the way I forgot to tell you, I just replaced the DC-DC converter potentiometers with rotary ones and extended them by wires to the power supply front interface for easy adjusting. Here if you press the right button until battery symbol appears on the screen, this is the battery charger mode. It will charge your battery until the voltage reaches the maximum limit or the current reaches zero. When this happens, the relay will switch off telling you battery is charged. Or if battery unstable and current reaches the maximum limits, it will also tell you that maximum current limit is reached. So that's not everything. Our power supply is programmable and we can add more features to it. I will share the code in description and you guys can modify it as you want and show your creativity to the world. So don't forget to subscribe and share this video, it may be useful for someone you know. Thanks for watching and if you have any question just leave a comment.
See you next time.